All right, all right, all right. Welcome back to Let's Play MTG. I'm your host, Eric. You're watching Cyborg MTG here on YouTube Gaming. I hope you like the show. If you do, give it that thumbs up. And if you like the content in general, as always, subscribe to the channel. There's always uh, more content, more decks to play, more fun to have. So make sure you hit that bell for the notification so you know when I'm going live. And um, <clears throat> yeah, we played this deck once earlier today. Uh, I've played this deck or versions of it uh, many times in the past and it's always been just a really really fun deck so uh, we're gonna run it in a couple you know competitive matches here and um, see what happens so hope you guys enjoy and uh, as always if you want to play this deck check the link in the description box below there's a link to mana traders and if you want to rent these cards give this deck a try for yourself you can do that with mana traders all you got to do is uh, sign up and there's a uh, coupon code down there where you can save 15% for your first three months. Not a bad, not a bad deal, not a bad deal. Anyway, let's, uh, let's talk about our deck here. Um, yo, Curl K, how's things, uh, how, how's things? Curl, who, you talking about me? Me? What's up, James? How you doing, buddy? Uh, you, you ready to, uh, to see this deck, you know, like, play out? Like, you, you like this deck? Um, I'll quit. I'll quit. Um, <clears throat> what did I add? Nothing. I haven't touched it. Um, I was looking for some comments and feedback from, from earlier. Nobody really had anything. Um, I've kind of like glanced through. It's like, uh, well, there's not like major things I would want to play. Um, Sarkin? Really? Sarkin? Sarkin Fireblood. What does Sarkin Fireblood do? Uh, let's see what Sarkin Fireblood does. So, Jam uh, James Barr says, let's add Sarkin Fireblood to it. Uh, that's the Dragon Speaker. Okay, Fireblood's the three mana one. But we're not casting any dragons. Like, I mean, you may discard a card if you do draw a card. Like, that, that plus one would be, would be good. Uh, but we would never be able to use the other plus one. Um, so then we've got a three mana, two ability Planeswalker. I, I think that like the Jaya Ballard just fits better there. Um, yeah, it's not a three mana walker, but it's, it's not like we have like a lot of protection for a three mana walker or something. So um, I, I don't think uh, I don't think Sarkin would work here. Um, I think it's it's easier to, to fire off with Jaya Ballard um, just because like. Worst case scenario, we're casting refurbish for one. Uh, best case scenario, we're throwing a couple, you know, key cards in the graveyard, some junk in the graveyard, drawing some other stuff. So, um, I, I think Jaya is probably like just better there. Um, as far as the deck itself goes, uh, we've got um, three copies of Cathartic Reunion. Only three here because when you draw this late game, it's very hard to actually cast it. You have to have two other cards in hand, and uh, we do get to that point where we're a little bit hell bent, you know, or at least heck bent. Uh, so we have no cards in hand or only one card in hand and then you top deck a cathartic reunion you still can't cast it um, so i did go with a full full play set of tormenting voice and then to make up for that last cathartic reunion i took a play out of for the hordes book and uh, used a pirate's pillage it's basically like tormenting voice but um, we're going to be able to like store some of that energy up till later. Jizza, how you doing, sir? Thank you very much. I appreciate it. Um, from what I understand, Jizza and James, Jizza's our other stream challenger. Um, Jizza and James are putting something together. They're ready to take me down after today. Um, so yeah, that'll be fun. Bring it, guys. Let's see what you got. Let's see what you got. Anyway, um, so yeah, we've got a lot of ways to draw cards and discard cards uh, from Pirate's Pillage, Tormenting Voice, Cathartic Reunion, and then... Um, you know, when we're moving on up into the um, converted mana cost, we can actually get cards in the graveyard with our combustible gear hulks. Sometimes that's like hit or miss. Like uh, we don't really have a lot of control over that. We may just draw those cards, and drawing those cards is usually not a bad thing either. So, uh, combustible gear hulk definitely at its best here. Um, as far as protecting ourselves to be able to you know, you know draw those cards and get up there because if let's face it if we're drawing cards on turn two we're not putting out anything we're not stopping anything so we really need to play some catch up on turn three and four um, and how we do that is we either you know go our ramp line where we're going into our cultivators caravan we're going to try to get to that you know that quick gear hulk or we're going to get to that quick Liliana and or you know just fix our mana so that we can cast the settle 
Oracle on turn four or something like that. Uh, Cultivator's Caravan's there for that. Um, I always like to say, you know, this gives pseudo haste because, you know, you can like bring in a Gear Hulk, refurbish that back, you know, play a Gear Hulk, something like that, and then swing with this 5-5. Five five. And a 5-5 five five is, uh, it's it's pretty good sized body. So, um, and then, you know, while I was talking about protecting ourselves, we have to protect ourselves and um, Sweltering Suns and Settle the Wreckage do a really good job at that. And we only have to protect ourselves for a slight moment um, and then at that point our creatures are normally large enough that we can deal with most things now we do have and um, you know, we want to make you get the salt shakers out all right all right fair enough fair enough the salt shakers coming out gotcha uh, thank you very much James I appreciate it, sir uh, cataclysmic gear Hulk our last ditch effort at you know trying to catch up trying to you know control the board uh, one of the things I like to mention about this card you know to people that might be new to playing the gear Hulks and stuff and uh, some of you might want to give it a try it's going to be rotating out soon the deck is always just kind of laid directly under all the you know the tier one decks uh, definitely has the power to actually you know jump up there and, and fight with the big boys uh, but cataclysmic gear Hulk when it comes in you can actually choose cataclysmic gear hulk and you can choose um you know another gear hulk so you choose this as the artifact and choose the other gear hulk as a creature you can actually keep two gear hulks on the battlefield um now this does say you also have to get rid of multiple enchantment like if you have more than one enchantment you get rid of this if you have more than one um planeswalker you'll get rid of this so i'm not really really heavy on multiple planeswalkers we do have the three copies of liliana and we have the uh one copy of gyro battle Jizza, uh, thank you so much, sir. I, I appreciate it. You guys are whittling on, on Rush there. <clears throat> just just whittling him down. Um, but we do have multiple planeswalkers. Like I would hate to get into a situation where we had, you know, Jaya Ballard firing off and we had um, you know Liliana firing off and then like our only saving grace would be, you know, to like cast a cataclysmic gear hulk or something. So, you know, that's not exactly where we want to be, and we'll talk about that a little bit more when I jump into the sideboard. But for the most part, let's look at those big gear hulks we're trying to get down here. Mainly just Noxious Gear Hulk and Combustible Gear Hulk. If you watched the challenge deck earlier um, when we played against James, uh, we were able to take back a um, Torrential Gear Hulk, but there was absolutely nothing, nothing that we could do cast with it there was just no instant spells in the deck at that time i had taken out to settle the wreckages so we just like didn't have a way to um like to really utilize combustible or um torrential gear hulk so the blue gear hulk's just not at its best here uh, but combustible gear hulk can really dome people i mean we could hit them for seven with a boneyard parlay or hit them with a couple gear hulks for six apiece um you know it it, it is possible for us to to do a large sum of damage with the current construction of the deck, though, there is no three cards in the deck that could be in that top three to just instantly dome someone for 20. Um, so we don't have that capability, uh, but we do have, you know, the ability to dome them for quite a bit. You know, if they take six off of off of a combustible gear hulk when it enters the battlefield, they basically just gave it haste um, and vigilance because it's not swinging. Um, <clears throat> yeah, that's uh, that's that's awesome. Um, now. Noxious Gear Hulk, one of those ways, you know, we can gain a little bit of life, restore a little bit of that power. Uh, we've got, uh, you know, Menace on this creature. It's actually a really good finisher. Um, this is our kill spell, go get him. Uh, and this is our um, defense spell. It's going to put more cards in our hand to help us, you know, defend against the other things that the opponent's doing. Um, it's also going you know, to be a great wall to put up that, you know, six first strike is just a ton of first strike damage. And it's really hard to get in over top of that. Um, not even Lyra, you know, like can get over top of, uh, well, she can just fly over. But Combustible Gear Hulk, you know, can swing straight into a Lyra. Um, no fear, you know, that sort of thing. It's not going to die. And then, of course, you know, Noxious Gear Hulk, and I mentioned it, but like more times than not, Nox Noxious Gear, Gear Hulk, is the one that is it's our beater yeah it comes down it removes a blocker and then the turn after that you know it's swinging and and if they kill it then hey you know it it happens um we're just bring it back some other way now there's a couple other things on jaya ballard here i want to like you know talk about jaya's um ultimate if you get an emblem with you may cast instant and sorcery cards from your graveyard um you can cast uh, a card cast this way would be exiled instead uh if it would go into your graveyard uh, so you exile it after you cast it no big deal but um 
the giant ballard here just giving us the opportunity to recast our refurbishes and uh, you know recast our our tormenting voices so that we can just churn through more cards and things I haven't actually had that happen yet but I'm looking forward to it I I'm, you can't have it happen if you don't run the deck or run the card in your deck so if, if any deck was going to be you know maybe a giant ballard deck being able to get you know one mana for refurbishes cast a couple torrential or uh, tormenting voices or cathartic reunions off of giant ballard that that seems like where I want to be and then her other plus ones you know discard the cards in our hand to help kind of set up our theme and uh, of course you know if we could use her to help ramp into that boneyard parlay where things could get out of control really really quick a lot of people may not know what boneyard parlay is I'll read this card for you really quick this is a uh, double black and five so seven mana sorcery oh man you play EDH, you gotta love some 7 mana for sorceries. Alright, there's some really powerful 7 mana sorceries out there. Well, this one says that exile up to 5 target creature cards from graveyards. So that's any graveyards. An opponent separates those cards into two piles. Put all cards from the pile of your choice onto the battlefield under your, uh, under your control. The rest into their owner's graveyards. So they split them up however they want. We pick the pile we want, so we get the last choice there. So it's actually really well um, suited as far as you know, not giving your opponent a lot of choice. Uh, the opponent is going to get to, you know, okay, I put this one with this, and then I put that. Oh, no, what if I put here? You know, it's just going to be a headache. Uh, if you've ever cast Fact or Fiction, um, or fact, uh, fact or Fiction, then you know that that it's a headache for the opponent and Boneyard Parlay is going to be kind of like that. I, I hope we get it off. It's probably not going to be in most most of our game twos, but uh, looking into the sideboard, I've got a couple enchantments here. Uh, I've got uh, cast outs and I've got the, um, Gideon's Intervention along with the Profane Procession. And we also have the Eldest Reborn, but the Eldest Reborn, I'm not so worried about it in this line that I'm about to talk about, and that's because um, that line is Cataclysmic Gear Hulk. So, Cataclysmic Gear Hulk, if we had multiple things under our cast outs, uh, we had our Gideon's Intervention down, our Profane Procession, um, and you know, we, had, we bring a Cataclysmic Gear Hulk into the battlefield, we may actually end up losing a bunch of stuff and then they get a bunch of stuff back or gain access to some stuff um, and we just really don't want that to happen. So most of the time I keep my enchantments in the sideboard and I bring them in for the matchups that I at least cut back on my Cataclysmic Gear Hulks. I may not cut all the Cataclysmic Gear Hulks out, but I at least want to cut back on some of them if I'm bringing in cards like Cast Out, Profane Procession, and Gideon's Intervention. These are enchantments that we want to you know, stay on the battlefield for a lasting effect, and I normally don't bring these enchantments in against early uh, creatures. As, as far as things like Hazard go, we can put a 6-6 in front of Hazard and block Hazard. Um, we can you know, bring in things like the Eldest Reborn, and stuff like that. We've got Settle the Wreckages. We we do have options to deal with Hazard. Um, we've got Angel of Sanctions. This kind of gives us that cast out aspect without actually having to bring in a um, you know an enchantment. And then uh, Angel of Inventions. This kind of uh, of an invention kind of works with our God Pharaoh's gift. It's only a little three card package to bring in, but there are some points where it's just really really handy. And then um, Chandra just gives us that extra little bit of ramp. We're not really into exiling cards off the top of our graveyard because we it, it really hurts us when we exile something like a Gear Hulk. We want to get as many cast as many enter the battlefield triggers off of those refurb our Gear Hulks as we possibly can. And refurbishing Liliana is how we're basically going to be doing that so uh, we can actually bring them back with some you know uh, eldest reborn and that's kind of why like I put the the god pharaoh's gift in the sideboard is because once a, a gear hulk is brought back with god pharaoh's gift first off it's much smaller much weaker um, and then you know if it does die at that point we don't have the option to bring it back from the graveyard anymore so, um, you know, it's just kind of gone. So I, I'm not really fond of the God Pharaoh's gift plan unless we just know that we need just ample resources. And if that's the case, then God Pharaoh's gift is, uh, is very good because if we do get it down, then we start bringing stuff back every turn. So uh, replace that dread shade and you're in business. What? One moment, guys. Speaking of shade... Lamp back there, casting shade. Can't have that. Can't have that, dude. Can't have. That. Oh no! Now he's shining real bright. Did that block the light? There we go. 
All right. Okay, Lamp, now they can see you. It's time to do this. Um, there's a couple other things I do want to mention, and I would probably go back and play around with this um, mana base a little bit more. Um, we've got the isolated chapels and the clifftop retreats and stuff, but there are you know some hostile deserts in this deck. Hostile Desert's uh, one of the few deserts that hasn't gotten a ton of play, but I actually think in this deck it's really, really good. We've got a lot of ways to throw uh, you know, stuff in our graveyard, uh, and sometimes those just happen to be lands, and when they are land, Hostile Desert's at its best. So, yeah. Um, absolutely awesome. Um, let's, uh, let's jump into a game. Yeah. I do ask, um, you know, call to action for you guys. Um... Oh, you was talking about a red-black vehicles deck? Okay, my bad, Chris. Um, I, I do want to ask you guys if, um, if... Are there any M19 cards? None are really sticking out to me to put in this deck, to update this deck with M19. Um, we've got a couple places we could remove the Jaya Bowed. We could remove the uh, Boneyard Parlay. Uh, we could, we, you know, we can move some stuff around like that. So we have, you know, three or four slots that are available that we could put something else in. But I just haven't found anything that just really calls to me. Um, at one point, most of those slots were held by Sun Scourge champions, but that was when I was running into a lot more freaking omnipotence. Um, that's when I was running into a lot more red deck. So you know, um, freeing. What is Fraying Omnipotence? Fraying Omnipotence. Each player loses half their life and then discards half the cards in their hand, then sacrifices half the creatures they control, rounded up. Hmm. That's like some major smallpox right there. That's a, that's one heck of a smallpox. Uh, I don't think so. I would rather have like Torment of Scarabs or something like that, uh, just, you know, tormenting our opponent. Um, let's jump into the queues. We'll see what happens here. All right. Novely? 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 Hmm. Too cute. I mean, could it be cuter than Boneyard Parlay? I mean, let's be honest here. I'm playing Boneyard Parlay. I probably should have put the, uh, the jank tag instead of Let's Play MTG up there. All right, um, not the best hand in the world, but not the worst. We do have some, um, you know, some ways to, you know, filter our hand, maybe get into some other stuff. Don't really have the white mana yet, um, but we're getting closer on the black, and we only need one more to cast Jaya Ballard. I think I'll keep. I just want to kind of see how this hand plays out. Our opponent goes, you know, um, you know, one drop red, mountain, probably so dead. We can play this on turn one and pretend we're Grixis. Desecrated Tomb, we anim animate a great deal. Um, I actually thought about your Desecrated Tomb, just giving me a couple more uh, a couple more bats and things like that. Um, it's also low on the curve. We play it very cheap. Um, so Desecrated Tomb may not be out of the question. I think if the deck was more of, you know, like an aggressive deck where we had things like Scrappy Scroungers uh, and things like that, then Desecrated Tomb might be um, might be good, but I don't know. Um, speaking of which, Justin Clay, have you thought about Desecrated Tomb in that deck, that, that Demon's deck you've got? Um, there was a lot of uh, interactions coming in and out of that deck. Um, you know, um, re <laughs> Reassembling Skeleton seems great right there, so Millstone. Hmm. Millstone. Like, what would I do? Mill myself? Like, I think Key to the City is a little bit better than that. I mean, just being able to, like, just churn in, like, churn into, you know, draw spells and discard. But then again, Hazard's Monument's not bad either. Um, so. Um, I mean, if anyone could make a bunch of bats have extra bodies that you could sack to your other demons I think if any deck could actually pull it off I think your deck would be uh, a really good candidate for uh, Desecrated Tomb just saying Justin um, 
Can't think of any other M19 cards, but you're a big fan of Eldest Reborn and would try it. I try and fit some into the main board. So, M uh, Eldest Reborn was like the the only saga that I was like, man, this probably fits. This is probably like where we want to be. And in all reality, this is probably one of the better decks to actually try to run Eldest Reborn in. So, um, maybe I should put some of the jank in the sideboard. We'll throw Eldest Reborns in there. Uh, we may do that in between some of the games. And um, just try that as our main board um, and, and work from there. I would like to see this Mardu gear you know, tuned up a little bit better. Um, I definitely need to go back and tweak the uh, land base. Wow, come on, dude. Uh, good luck, have fun. Suspicious bookcase. Um, I like the bookcase, but... What did we play the bookcase in? It was in one of those other decks. Um, I can't remember right off hand what the bookcase does, but I remember going, this card's not horrible. Bookcase. Suspicious bookcase. It's a defender. Target creature can't be blocked this turn. Nah, I don't think so. Nah. Nah. We played that in the um, Arcades deck. That's what it was. Yeah, I, I'm I'm not a I'm not a fan of uh of the bookcase. Right, yeah, we played it in the in the wall deck. That was it. Arcades. That was uh I think that deck like have you touched that deck anymore, Justin? That mono green touched inappropriately. Right. Did mono green just destroy it? I, I can't remember though. I can't remember every every game. Sorry, Eric. Do you think Dread Shade would be in a black red vehicles deck? Dread Shade. Let's read Dread Shade. Is it one word? Two words? Um. I don't think you'd be a, you'd be mainly a black deck if you were trying to cast this. I um, hope you're not trying to cast this and like double red spells, stuff like that. Um, I don't know. I, I, I don't I don't I don't think so, man. I, I really don't. Um, Dread Shade in a red black deck. Like I'd have to see the rest of the deck, and it would just depend. Um, like, this is just going to go really, really well in, like, a base black deck that might be splashed red. So, you would have to kind of look at the construction of the current red black decks. Change all the cards in them to black. Change all the lands that are mountains into swamps. And kind of roll with it like that. Um, personally, I, 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 don't, I don't know if there's... I don't know. There's a lot of good black cards. You might be able to construct something out of that that might actually be really, really mean, like a, a based black red deck instead of you know red black. But in a red based deck where you actually have more than you know three or four um, you know uh, mountains in the deck, I, if you have four or more mountains in the deck or four or more cards that cannot cast um, or four or more lands that cannot cast uh, your triple black spell, I don't think I would cast it. I don't think I would play it. Come on, opponent. What's going on? So, like, are we just going to time our opponent out here? We're five minutes up on them. Just a free game. I don't want to, like, get started into another game and then, like, you know, them start and we're, like, trying to play two games at once. And Oh, that might be fun, right? That might be a lot of fun. What about Fling or Thud? No. No. i play Fling over Thud, but, um... I would rather just, like, instead of running, uh, like, the only time I would want to fling my Gear Hulk at someone would be, you know, if they're trying to Veraska's Contempted or something like that. And in those cases, you would more than likely just be better off bringing in the Lost Legacies or something like that and just calling the Veraska's Contempt or the Gideon's Intervention and just saying Veraska's Contempt. Um, it, you know, I did that earlier today. It does work. And I will admit, like, Veraska's Contempt is the one card that I'm worried about with running this deck. And that's because, you know, we need to be able to play these Gear Hulks multiple times. We don't want 
to just have one or two uh, enter the battlefield triggers off of these gear hulks. We want multiple um, options here. And then when we get multiple gear hulks in the graveyard, we have multiple answers there. So we can bring back the gear hulk that's most prevalent to you know the current situation. So um, you know I really don't like it when the opponent has Veraska's contempts because they can just deal with those things. So um, you know I Fling could help you against Veraska's contempt. Thud would not. Thud's a sorcery. Um, so I don't think Thud would ever fit in this deck. Um, one mana is not bad. You know, Thud's kind of like a, a win more card. I'm already doing okay. I'm going to smack you for six with my combustible gear hulk. And then second main phase, throw it at you for another six. Yeah, that's kind of like win more. I would rather be sitting on a fling that costs two mana. And, you know, going, hey, I'm going to swing with you this. Swing with this. Oh, you're going to kill that. Let me fling it at you instead. Um, you know, that that's kind of where I would rather be with the fling uh, and thud situation. But either way, I, I don't really think that I'd want to play either of those here. Um, I would just rather want to play uh, something like, you know, Gideon's Intervention or Lost Legacy to, to keep them from, like, uh, trying to trying to take my, um, my creatures away from me. Come on, opponent! <clears throat> okay. The opponent is, like, nine minutes behind us. All right. Um, I guess we join another. Can we do that? Can we run two games? Oh, goodness. Our opponent's going to come back. We're going to be playing this game. And now we're going to be playing this game. Oh. You were thinking playing for lethal, but... Uh, now, I'm not the master, sir. I, I I am definitely not the master. I've got some opinions. I'm an opinionated person, but by no means am I a master. Um, fair to decent player, maybe. Uh, lucky, 100%. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Uh, have I ever done two games before? Have we ever done two games before? Not on stream. I have done it but not on stream. Okay, well. Here we go. We're going to start one of them. So, on our other game, we have chosen to keep our hand. And then on this game, we have chosen to keep our hand. Oh, it's a little bit ugly, but I am going to keep. Right, so, let's get rid of this stuff. I guess we'll get a notification when he's ready, right? Alright, so our opponent plays Stone Quarry. I'm worried. I'm worried. We're playing against a... Um, we're playing against a... Like... Red-Black Approach deck. Something like that. Hey! What happened? Um, We won the other game! Look at that! Already won one. Okay, uh, don't worry, that won't count. That won't count. Come on. So the reason I played the red land on turn one is I want to leave myself open to um, drawing an untapped source this turn. Didn't get there. That's okay, though. Next turn, we're going to toss some of these, um, these cards away and just kind of start trying to draw. Let's see what the opponent's got here. Kanjali Sunwing. Okay. Well, that's a card. And my creatures will enter the battlefield tapped. A Boneyard Parlay. Alright, so I'm going to Cathartic Reunion here. We need to look at as many cards as possible. We'll throw away Tormenting Voice. Tormenting Voice. <clears throat> Just a really heavy Tormenting Voice hand. Still no lands. Oh my goodness. Um, we'll discard a gear hulk. Um, the only thing we can really hope for here is the opponent tries to go really wide, and then we can draw a red land and maybe sweltering suns or something. So, um, yeah, really bad draws here. Really bad draws. Uh, should probably get rid of that boneyard partly. Dinosaur stampede. 
Haven't seen that in a while. Um, Tormenting Voice. Man, now I wish I would have saved a Tormenting Voice. And I'm just going to get rid of a, a Gear Hulk here. We did get a land. Thank goodness. Thank goodness. It wasn't a red land, but hey, I will take it. I'll take it. Yeah, I really wish I would have saved, uh, saved a Tormenting Voice there. Yeah. <laughs> screw plus screw equals salt. Well, that's that's a legit thing. Um, yeah. You like the Pyromancer? You just got here and uh, you don't know what we're uh, dealing with here, but you've been interested to see the Dismissive Pyro find a home. Dismissive Pyro. Um, I think that I am stuck trying to find land here. So, we're going to cycle, look for a land. Didn't find one. It's going to get nasty, ladies and gentlemen. It's going to get nasty. So, we've got all the gear hooks in the graveyard. All the things. Trap Jaw Tyrant. Oh, goodness. Untapped land off the top. Give it to me. Come on. Oh, that's a Liliana. I'm cycling. We're doing it. Oh, my goodness. Discard another Noxious. Oh my goodness. We're not out though. We are not out of this. So we'll see. It's pretty close though. Like I ain't gonna lie. We're it's pretty close. Burning Sun's avatar. Oh my goodness. We're at two. Canyon slew and it's tapped. Oh my goodness. <laughs> Turn seven. Three mana. Hey. Can't draw all the best stuff all the time. I think I definitely should have kept um, you know, one of those tormenting voice. Uh, I was expecting to... I wasn't really expecting things to go that direction. Um, I'm definitely expecting the opponent to have a um, few creatures. Uh, and we want to be able to deal with those without actually dealing like damage to them or something like that. So I'm going to bring in um, the Eldest Reborn and Profane Procession. Now, because I'm not bringing in Cast Out, Gideon's Intervention, or those things, um, I actually may bring in an Angel. I'll cut back on... Um, one combustible gear hulk. We'll cut back on a sweltering suns. I, we'll say two sweltering suns and a pirate's pillage. Um, it should probably be Jaya Ballard, though. You know what? We can actually get rid of Boneyard Parlay and Jaya Ballard. And that leaves us two more cards. Which should probably be just leaving the combustible gear hulk. And. I guess we get to leave in Pirate's Pillage. Just more draw discard. Seems okay. Yeah, let's run it like let's run it back like that. We'll just cut the gyre ballard in the boneyard instead of the, the pirate's pillage and such. Okay. So we got one, two, three, four, five lands, sweltering suns, Liliana. Call me crazy, but I am going to keep it. Crazy. Um, cast out. Um, I'm running the the. Um, I'm. I don't think this is a matchup where I take the cataclysmic gear hulks out. So, uh, and but I do think this is a matchup where I um I do bring in a couple profane processions or or something like that. So I don't want to have too many enchantments out. And um and and that's that's kind of like where I'm at on that. Like I think that if I brought out more enchantments, that um that it would it would interfere when I started trying to play my cataclysmic gear hulks and such. So Yeah, we'll just play Dragon Skull Summit and then pass. 
I mean, if he plays a red-white split land or something like that, we may fail to ruin it next turn. Um, doesn't look like it. Alright, well, when it's dealt damage, it deals two damage to target opponent or planeswalker. So he had, if I sweep the board here... We definitely need to go get a planes, right? Like, this is 100% needs to, to like become a planes, right? He's got five cards in hand. We went first. I kind of want to suns this. Just be done with this. Not take this three points of damage. Just take two. Buy ourselves a little bit of time. I th I think that's where we're at. We just buy a little bit more time here. Um, this is actually, you know, a mana dork, so removing it sounds really decent. Um, yeah, I think we just Sweltering Suns. Go ahead and, and knock that out of the ballpark. And then, um, we'll just go from there. Burn his butt. Meteor Golem. Oh my goodness. Now we're talking. Now we're talking. Okay. Um, Meteor Golem may be it. I mean, that's a really good enter the battlefield effect. Uh, and we're getting closer. Uh... I think I just want to do it now. And then we'll just grab a planes. I don't think he's got a lot of instant speeds. I could be wrong and we, we could get like blown out here. But I'm just going to grab a planes. And then I'll pass. So now we're good for Cataclysmic Gearhawk. We're good for, you know, Settle the Wreckage. Um, yeah, seems okay. Lightning Strike? Well, he could have done that anyway. Now, if he shocks me on top of it, well... Right, yes! Um, I am not disagreeing with... Uh, with the idea of... I'm just going to plus Liliana. I mean, that throws a couple cards in our graveyard, makes a zombie. Yeah. Um, we got a Noxious in the graveyard. So we would have drawn Tormenting Voice Noxious for a Cataclysmic um, and a Swamp. Eh. What's up, Zax? How you doing, buddy? You're a little late, but you made it. Well, thanks for coming, sir. Thank you for coming. Well, I mean, it seems like he's got quite a bit of removal. Um, I think if he had, like, cast out or something, we would have seen it that turn. Um, instead of him just killing a zombie. Um, but we may see, like, Ixalan's Binding or something here. Sunblessed Mount. When Sunblessed Mount enters the battlefield, you may search your library for card named Watley Dinosaur Hunter. Sure. Sure, opponent. Go get your dinosaur. Your dinosaur hunter. Let's read this card. I, I don't even know what Watley Dinosaur Hunter does. Plus two, put two 1-1 one -one counters on up to one target dinosaur you control. Um, so if you don't have a dinosaur, you could just put plus two counters on Watley. Uh, minus three, target dinosaur you control deals damage equal to its power to target creature you don't control. So dino, your dino fights their critter. And then minus seven, dinos you control get plus four, plus four until end of turn. An ultimate that is only till end of turn. Oh man, these Planeswalker decks. Planeswalker decks. Um, if I lose to this, I'm going to feel so bad. Doesn't look like a dino hunter. Uh, Dino Rider, yeah. Um, the Blessed Mount. Is this Watley's Blessed Mount? 
It's pretty cool. I mean, I like how I like how they put the feathers on the on the tail of the raptors and stuff like that. I think that was really really good. Um, I'm gonna play the land, and we're just bringing back Noxious Gearhawk here. So I'll go ahead and do that. Um, I know that I want to do that. Like that's just bam, we're gonna do that. So we'll just gain four, we get our body down, and then... I mean, he's got three cards in hand. One of them is is his Watley. Watley. Uh, yes, we'd love to use that ability. And then I'm going to Cathartic Reunion here. And we're just going to get rid of um, Cataclysmic Gear Hulk. And settle the wreckage. We've still got more settles. We can draw into more. And right now we're winning. So yeah. Um. But we could swing here. Like a tormenting voice. I think I just want to like. I could double tormenting voice and just like trade out all four of these cards and see four more cards, which doesn't sound bad. Or I could just swing with a a hostile desert. I don't think I'm swinging with Hostile Desert. Let's uh, let's get rid of the planes. We'll see what we find. More Cathartic Reunion? Alright, sure. Um, just churn through our deck here. We'll, we'll get rid of the land um, and the Combustible Gear Hulk. Even more lands. Alright, well, whatever. Definitely churning through the deck here. We're um, we're down to 37 cards left in the deck. Our opponent's got um, 45. So no, not our Liliana. We haven't found another one either. So um, let's play Isolated Chapel, Tormenting Voice. We'll discard the mountain. Draw two cards. See what we can find. I mean, you know, just churning through. I see four likes. Smash that like button right now. Please do. Please do. Hit that like button. It helps out a lot. Um, you know, if you share the video, that's also great. Um, you know, just helps us reach out to, to more people. And, um... All right. Well, yeah, I'm just going to attack. I was thinking about, like, uh, crewing the hostile desert but I'm gonna cycle both of these canyon slews <clears throat> the sad part is I actually threw away some playable cards there like I could have just played the combustible gear hulk um, but the plan was to just kinda churn through find some more refurbishes some, something like that so um, fun fact you named your daughter Liliana and your wife didn't know it was Planeswalker until she had monogram so she got to like looking up Liliana or something and was like oh this is bad this is bad Uh, all right, so he got his burning sun. So we're gonna we're gonna cycle. We're going to cycle again. <laughs> More lands, pirates pillage. Uh, let's do it. Red. Man, we'll go this way. Pirates pillage. Getting rid of mountain. Draw two cards. Get some treasures. Oh my goodness! Deck! Quit it! 
Uh, we'll play the Isolated Chapel. Swing for five. And I guess we just pass. Like, oh my goodness, at the, um, the number of, of lands we've drawn here. Like, I don't even run that many. I run like 24 in the stack. Uh, yeah, I, I should have I shouldn't have gotten rid of like combustible gear hulk and things like that. No, not our noxious gear hulk. That's okay. We're really close to a refurbish. I can feel it. It's just right there. It's just right there. Come on, castable spell. Give me a spell in this deck. For real death spitter. All right. Touche. Touche. Good job, deck. That is, um, that is a castable spell. Um, we might be dead here. I mean, we're taking eight points of damage. So, yeah. Taking nine points of damage. Never mind. Only going to be eight. All right, so we're going to egg pile a card. So let's go ahead and tap some lands. So we're going to tap this one, and we're going to tap this one. And we're going to uh, exile this plains. Crew up our hostile desert. Then we're going to crew our 5-5 five five here. We will block trade. I mean, he didn't give it trample, so, I mean, it's going to get two points of damage through. I mean, it, trample wouldn't have gotten through anyway, 5-5, five five, but uh, we're going to take the two. We're at two. Refurbish. Noxious Gear Hulk something. Liliana. Perfect. Thank goodness. Alright. So, we'll play our Liliana. I mean, we were due. We were so due, guys. Um, so, we'll play Liliana. And then we will return a Noxious Gear Hulk from the graveyard to the battlefield. Gain six life. We'll be back at eight. I will crew, so we'll use these lands, we'll get rid of a canyon slew, well not crew, but activate our um, hostile desert, and then, like I kind of want to attack Watley, but I also just want to attack him, so we're going to do that, we're just going to attack him, this Watley doesn't scare me too much, I mean it, maybe it should, um, but so far, no, it, it's not. I mean, he's got two cards in hand. He needs something really, really good here. Um, Sky Terror, that's not horrible. The good news is we've gotten, we've gone through so many lands that we have to start drawing stuff, right? We have to start drawing stuff. Refurbish off the top would be terrific. I mean, we've got... What have we got in the grave that we could use? Well, that's not horrible. Um, I mean, at least that protects us a little bit. There's a Refurbish and another Liliana. Let's, um... Let's crew here. So, if I swing with it... Oh, I mean, he can't block this anyway. Maybe I shouldn't have crewed at all. Yeah, I wasted a, wasted a land. Alright. So, yeah, we'll just... I, I'm not going to swing with this. I shouldn't have crewed. I, I, I'm still thinking the Sky Stare Terror was a 2-2. Two -two. I wasn't thinking about it. And yeah. So, Settle will save us! Right? It will. It will. Settle will save us. We've got a ton of land, though. 
I'm going to hang on to these last two land, though, just in case I draw another Cathartic Reunion. Do I have another one, two... Yeah, there's one left in the deck, so... Um... Oh, no, opponent. Are you just going for lethal? He's going for lethal. Scoop. Just scoop. Mm. That cove in the settle art must be very important. Right? Right. It must be. The opponent goes asterisk, 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 asterisk. Is the other game still going? No, we won that one by default. Uh, the opponent never came back, um, so we just kind of won that game. Um, what do we make? Ch like, what changes do we make here to to fight against this deck? Ah, <sighs> all right. I guess we just kind of run it back like it is. I mean, Sweltering Suns may be good in case he's more aggressive, but I don't really think so. We could call Burning Suns Avatar and just never worry about that dude. Um, I don't think so. I think I think I run it back the way it is. I think I, I like where we're at. Spyglass is Walkers. Um, those Walkers really don't. Uh, um, I don't. I, I'm not really worried about his walkers. Like, he may have like an Ajani slid in here or something like that, and it may end up scaring me to death. But uh, oh man, we've got that that bad opening hand again. Like this is how we lost our first game was we just never drew anything. Come on, deck. Either this or the deck's about to teach me a lesson right here. Um, and it may be. The deck may be about to teach me a lesson. Um, uh, what did the hand say to the face, Rush? Um, <laughs> alright, so as always, I'll play the red source, leave us, uh, open for, um, a, a top deck land that comes in on tap, allow us to cast our tormenting voice, uh, but yeah, we were just digging, digging. Oh, wow, I like how you did it twice, so that's... All right, so you, so you answered the answered the question. Um, that's 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 funny. Well, we did get more lands. Uh, I will go ahead and play the Canyon Slew as the Canyon Slew um, will bring in the, the isolated chap. That, that's pretty good, Jizza. I like. I'm not lying. That's that's pretty funny. Um, good way to do it. I I like the fact that you guys are. I mean, if you're going to do that $10 donation anyway, break it up, have a little bit of fun with it. Unless it's costing you more money, I don't know exactly how that works, but if it's costing you more money, then then, then I understand. But I, I like the idea of you guys breaking it up and having fun with it. Um, Alright, so we do get to throw some stuff away here. So will Tormenting Voice... Let's pitch... I mean, we're playing whatever we pitch right here next turn, right? Noxious gear. Hold on. Another refurbish and a sweltering suns. Okay, so depending on um, what the opponent plays here, we may just sweltering suns next turn, and then just kind of like bide time with our our baddies here. Oh no, is he getting stuck on land? Nah, he's got land, right? He's just playing second, main phase. Like a good player, right? Because he's a good... Wow, burning us to death! Trying to do this quick, huh, opponent? Uh, Alright, well, then I'm not going to play around with it. I will bring back my, uh, my Gear Hulk here. Next turn, I'll just play Liliana. We'll start upticking. Um, we're not actually going to do any damage to this Death Spitter, um, so no, uh, 
no no spit flying at our ourself. Um, the death spitter, right? Like you know, this dinosaur is the du the, the little dinosaur that got Newman off of off of uh, Jurassic Park, right? Like it had to be the same. That's got to be the same guy. Like, that's the one who got Newman. To a new player, this must seem so unfair. I don't think he's a new player. I, um, I mean, he's got some new cards here, but he was like, "Oh, you played that card." So Newman had it coming. Newman, right? I don't even remember what the guy's name was on the, in Jurassic Park. I've just always called him Newman. Oh, Jerry Seinfeld, you have warped our generation. Um, Otapek Huntmaster. Yeah, this can't be fair. I'm doing a pre-main phase. Like, he's stuck on land. Like, this is how our game one went. Um, but nine times out of ten, like, just drawing those cards, it'll get you where you need to be. And I think if I were going to do many things, that Boneyard Parlay may come out for one additional land. I know we got flooded, but... I was also hurting for it in another one, so you know that was that was a thing. Hourglass Dorfstein. Well, thank you. I appreciate that. Um, if you do like the music, uh, in the bottom left-hand corner, like all the way, like opposite of where I'm at right now, all the way down there, there's a little white bar. Um, it's like right down here somewhere, like right below that. Um, it'll tell you what song we're on, and you can find all of this music over at OC Remix. Um, they're right here on YouTube, and uh, they've got their own website. Uh, you can go download uh, from ocremix.org. I think there's a link in the description box below. Um, completely royalty-free music, uh, so you know you can. Um, it's just people that like to have fun and re remake and, and re um, remix. Um, you know, really. Um, really cool tracks that were played on you know video games in the 90s so yeah um, we threw a combustible gear hulk into the graveyard all right i'm going to swing and then i'm going to bring back combustible gear hulk yeah that's exactly what I'm I'm gonna swing and I'm gonna bring back combustible gear hole. Alright, so he's at 10. Does he let me draw three cards here? Bam! Read closely, opponent. Read very, very closely. I think the Gear Hulk looks so cool when they bring it back with Liliana like this and it becomes half black, half red. Why doesn't Magic design more cards like I think this card just looks great. Like that design, the, the color, the way it all works together. I love the look of this card when it gets brought brought back by Liliana. That is, it's, I like me some Gear Hulk. Read closely. I either draw three, or he may die. I drew three. He would not have died. He would have only taken five. Oh, that's a thing. We get to sweltering sons. I mean, whatever, right? Throw me another Gear Hulk in the graveyard. Just for giggles. Um, you're more of a math guy, what? Your science is very strong, poops. Hey everyone, this guy just played... Whatley Dino Rider. See? No way. <laughs> um, what, it, what was that dino called? Right? Like, what is that Whatley? It's the Watley no one has ever played. It does kind of feel mad, bad. What we're doing here. This is just mean.
Um... So we got Eldest Reborn and a Cultivator's Caravan in the grave. Cataclysm and Gear Hall. I don't see a way that I can just get through with everything this turn. He's going to exile something. So I guess he exiles like combustible, right? And then like noxious just kills everything else. I guess I don't know. I think we get to get through with the zombie here too, though, because he's got to jump in front of everything else. Here we go. It's on you, opponent. Right now I'm just being a bully. What do you want me to do? Scoop to him? No, we don't do that. We're playing jank. This is not tier one. This is not anything like that. This is shenanigans. Pure shenanigans. You're right, though. We are. We're, we're being a bully. This is a big mean deck. Ooh. So he just wants to keep this alive. And he's like, when it's dealt damage, I will deal with that. It's actually a better block than I anticipated. Getting rid of old noxious. Um. It's until it leaves the battlefield. This is so wrong. It's just so wrong. It's so mean. Oh, wait. And because this creature is no longer on the battlefield, yeah, I'm gonna. I'm gonna kill the combustible. Just put it back in the graveyard where it belongs. I could have refurbished it back like right then, but why? Sweep the leg, right? Um, uh, see, full control. It's scientific jank, though. We're in full control here. We were in full control, 100%. Full control. Sweep the leg. Justin Clay's like sweep the leg. <laughs> Just knock off, knock all the wind from his sails. Um, I guess we just swing here. He's burning himself! He's burning himself! Isn't he? Is he burning himself or is he burning my... No, he's burning it. Okay, I thought he was burning himself. My bad. Uh... Alright, well, that was, uh, that was brutal. I, I, that, that actually, that didn't really feel that great. Um, he's at five now. That is bully status. I didn't cast other things. I just, I just let my thing go. Yeah, my bad. My bad. Was it too much? We overdo it. You guys think I'm mean now from playing against James? How come when I play a Mardu Gear Hulk Jank deck, all of a sudden I'm mean? I'm a bully now. <laughs> he beat us in game one, right? bully up, right? I was pretty mean to James today. And not even meaning to be. The deck was just like oh, he knows what you're playing. Here. I'll just keep exactly what you need right here on top of the library where he can't bother it. <laughs> oh, you big bully.
I am a bully. Aw. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. It might be bourbon. It's tea. It's tea. It's tea. Yeah. No bourbon. We'll do bourbon, um, I guess, next week or something like that. We'll do a bourbon stream. I, I'm too old to do bourbon too often. Like, I, So, for one, I'm, I'm just not a big drinker. Like, um, I... Uh, I um uh, I drink from time to time. I um when you know I know Val's got Lincoln things like that. I'll let myself. Uh, is it sweet tea? Yes, it is. It's 100% sweet tea. Um, but yeah, I I'm just not huge on drinking. Hey, look, it's a better hand than we've had in the past. I think maybe all these hands look the same as long as you have like tormenting voice and the man of the cast it. Uh oh, uh oh, ladies and gentlemen. Now we're not. Now we're about to get bullied. We're about to get bullied right here. This is about to happen. This is going to be nasty. This is going to get bad. There's a still leaf. <laughs> oh, goodness. Uh, so the only way we live through this is we somehow catch the, like a Galta with this noxious. Um, I think I do need to get noxious in the grave. Yeah, double refurbish, no land. No, not like this. Not like this. So we need red source, black source, or red source, white source, and another white source. Brontodon. Sweltering Suns doesn't even save us here. Um, that's a start. I mean, that is definitely a start. So, I think my actual, like, greatest hope here is to cycle this. Um... And look for another land, which I can actually do on his turn, so no point in doing it right now. Mainboard Vine Mayor. Vine Mayor is actually really good. Um, I almost played Mono Green today. Um, that was definitely a deck I was looking into playing. We're at six. Okay, so we need White Source. We need. Um, We need a white source here. That ain't it. That ain't it. That ain't it, ladies and gentlemen. Mono green. Mono green meanness. Just beating us down. Um, so Chandra's really good in this matchup. Pirate's Pillage is a little too late. Um, we definitely need to hit our white lands, which is probably actually like my biggest problem in this deck, like making sure that I hit white lands. Um, we're definitely going to get rid of cute cards. So we get rid of Bonard Parley and Jaya Ballard. Um, what else is kind of meh? Um, get rid of Sweltering Suns for... Profane Procession, Angel of Sanctions, and I think Eldest Reborn. And then we've got one card spot left, Gideon's Intervention. Uh, Gideon's Intervention is one of the few few cards that will actually allow us to, to catch up from behind. Uh, like, they may already have, you know, their stuff on the battlefield, and Gideon's Intervention will allow us to... Um, you know, stop that stuff that's already there from doing damage. So, I normally just use it to like answer against like Carnage Tyrants and stuff like that. But you could call Vine Mayor, and Vine Mayor wouldn't be able to do any damage to you. So, um, probably gonna make your contract deck tonight. Awesome, awesome. I'll be uh, I'll be excited to see those this uh, this weekend. Um, as you guys know, um, you know Friday I normally don't stream, so this will be the last stream until Subscriber Sunday. 
So, um, hopefully we'll have some, some good decks uh, to play around with, and uh, I look forward to it. I really do. So this is okay. I mean, next turn we're going Clifftop Retreat into a Cultivator's Caravan. I mean, this is not a land of war. You know, this is this is via Pashiri. Like this is nowhere near a land of world style. I mean, it's hard to beat this deck when it curves out. Well, this may be mono green something else that just has land of worlds and still leave champions in it, which I could see that. Like that, there's nothing wrong with that. Um. This isn't horrible. Now we're set up for Settle the Wreckage mana. We're set up for Cataclysmic Gear Hulk mana. Um, which we may just actually just drop a Cataclysmic Gear Hulk next turn. And then, you know, the turn after that, start trying to clean things up with, uh, you know, like a Chandra or, or Settle the Wreckage or, or something like that. So, um, yeah, I, I, I don't mind putting Cataclysmic Gear Hulk down right here. Especially if he adds more to the battlefield. I mean, he's got quite a bit of mana, so I mean, if he adds a couple more creatures to the battlefield here, I'm definitely okay with that. Ooh, does he just get rid of our Cultivator's Caravan right now? I'm just going to pop it on the spot. Bam! Serving to the Conduit. Tapping out. Um, I'm okay with that. Like, I have my mana this game, so I'm definitely okay with that. Yeah, um... So I wonder which one he gets rid of here. Like, if I just re refurbish back the Cultivator's Caravan, like, <laughs> I wanted it back. Um, I don't think so. Um, like, so, I could refurbish back the Cataclysmic Gear Hulk just to kill one of these, right? Or I could just play Chandra and just kill one anyway, but then like the other one kills Chandra back. Um, I uptick Chandra and Chandra um, survives a turn. Unless he like, spins Pump or we get other cards. Um, I think I uptick Chandra here. And... I'll exile as much as I don't want to exile for that exact reason for that exact reason can you imagine next turn we would have just played it I almost just made mana and passed right cataclysmics definitely for the gold white go wide matchups um, for the matchups uh, against white decks that have a lot of uh, enchantment base removal things like that um, Cataclysmic Gear Hulk. There's quite a few matchups out there where Cataclysmic Gear Hulk is like the greatest Gear Hulk. It just, it's like, really, you play that card? Um, nobody plays that card, but yeah. Journey to Eternity, that's cool. He did. He used his pump spell just to, to kill this, uh, this Chandra. That's happening. He played a land and. by Chandra. That was pretty sweet, opponent. Um, not gonna lie. So I'm gonna hard cast this um, this gear hole, and I'm gonna pick my gear hole as my. Should I pick it as my artifact or as my creature? Huh? Decisions, decisions. All right, I'll I'll pick it as my artifact. Oh yeah, uh, Cataclysmic Gear Hulk is absolutely great right now against uh, Mono Blue. Um, you know, Mono Blue's putting down a ton of artifacts and things, and you're like, bam, pick one. So uh, you don't have to watch when you play it though, because if they got like a paradoxical outcome around, they're like, mm, I'm gonna put them all back in my hand. Like I ain't destroying them, um, and that's not always what you want to be. So, all right, we've got our. Our Vigilance 4-5, your, yours, I uh, see, Inquisitor 
Jesus says, mine is more RB spot removal. Uh, you thought about separate bard. Um, you went uh, the carnage tyrant, tyrant route. Okay. Well, ooh, wow, look at that. Destroy target artifact. All right, well, we need a land. Do I have a land in the graveyard? No land in the graveyard to crew my hostile desert. Um, all right, so we're going to go cathartic reunion. Discarding both. We're doing it. Come on, land. All right, there's a the land. There we go. All right, so we're going to get back combustible gear hole. Uh, and see if we can get some value here. That I was definitely taking a risk there. We had to draw a land out of those top three cards. If we didn't get a land, um, then we weren't going to be able to play that refurbish. And then, you know, like Vivian Reed will tick up. And then by the time we can play and then attack. And you know, Vivian Reed would be able to destroy yet another artifact. Um, so, yeah. Um, he took the damage too. He didn't give me the cards. He just took the damage. Um, pitched a refurbish, a cathartic reunion, and Vivian's gonna look at the top four cards. Let's see what he reveals. Brontodon. That's not bad. That's not a bad card. This Vivian Reed might be a thing. Might be a thing. Atlanta War Elf. Well, he played the Brontodon. He killed my my combustible gear hulk. Liliana off the top would be sweet. Um, we're just gonna play Noxious. Probably should have killed the Lana War Elf here, but considering um, Servant of the Conduit actually can't even boost mana at this point, he doesn't have any energy. So Servant of the Conduit is just a 2-2 two -two beater. Um, so I probably should have killed the Lana War Elf. I wonder if he down ticks this Vivian Reed. Um, he does not. So we go 1, 2, 3, and then it requires 5. So we're a long way from being able to play this and... Okay. All right, opponent. All right. Um, Merfolk Branchwalker is the card he has on top. Did he left it? He's like, okay, Branchwalker is gonna do it. That's I'm good with that. Um, I mean, maybe we'll draw something off the top here. Um, okay, so if we go one, two, three, we have four available. We still can't like play this and use it. Um, one, two, three, four, five, six. We can't. All right, so this is gonna be a little strange, but I'm not wasting the my noxious gear hulk here. Um, so I'm gonna go one, two, exile my planes, crew my um, hostile desert, and use hostile desert, which actually has a really good body. It's a it's a three four, um, and we're gonna use it to swing at Vivian Reed. And uh, the main reason I want to swing at Vivian Reed here is. Um, like I just want to kill more of his dudes, and I I think that we get to kill this uh, this Merfolk Branchwalker by doing this. Poopy, thank you so much, sir. I appreciate it. Um, you've got five on it. Um, you can't wait to see if we destroy Galta and gain twelve life. Uh, right. Uh, I think one of the last times I played this, we got to play against like a Saffron Olive. Uh, Galta Fling deck, and um, I got to do that. 
uh, against the Galt of Fling deck. And that was pretty good. This Vivian Reed, though, boys. I ain't even joking. Like, this card... Maybe I should have spent my mana last turn, played the Profane Procession. Um... I guess that's worth killing. Still Leaf Champion's coming down. Does he play the Still Leaf here? No. No Still Leaf. Okay. Alright. Um, so we got a Field of Ruin. So Vivian just destroys that. So what do we want to do? Like we want to play it and take something, or do we want to play Noxious Gear Hulk and make him? I guess we just play the Noxious Gear Hulk. Yeah, because Vivian just down takes and destroys this anyway. So we'll take the Jade Light Ranger and gain a little bit more life past the turn maybe getting our uh, vn has to down tick we know that he's got still leaf champion coming here um so next turn we'll down tick profane procession or we'll you know use the profane procession and get the still leaf champion and that'll buy us a little bit more time Oh my goodness, Tormenting Voice. Well, we can't do that. Unfortunately, we just cannot. White, black. We'll grab the Steel Leaf Champion. Poopy, joining the community. Thank you, sir. I appreciate it. Um, that means a lot. That really does mean a lot. And that would have made you the stream boss anyway. Uh, you were already stream boss. Uh, thank you so much. Um, I could have sworn you were already a sponsor. Poopy Fatty has become a sponsor. Thank you very much, sir. I appreciate that. Um, and again, welcome. Uh, right? Yeah, you get night mode too, right? Like if you watch on YouTube gaming, you can join the community. You get to use you, uh, the the emojis. Um, you get to there's a ton of things you can do on night um, on YouTube gaming. So yeah, that's uh, that's a thing, right? And that's where you join to become a sponsor. So you uh, yeah, let's give a, a bunch of um, you know. Well, you guys are already doing it. Some golden nuts, some mana screws, all the other things. Welcome, welcome, Poopy, to the the community. He's got his his green name tag. He's got his uh, his sideboard MTG emblem, and uh, he's got all of his emojis to play with. So you can express yourself in any way you see fit, my man. Any way you see fit. Oh man, this is. Uh... So we go. All right, how, how does this work? We go one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Uh, all right. Um, yeah, I'm just going to take some things. We don't have any lands in the graveyard, so I don't get to... To do craziness. Um, he has to down take Vivian next turn, I do believe. I think he does. Um, yeah, we don't have any lands in the graveyard, so we can't do that. Like, he can't let me get back, like, Still Leaf Champion and, I don't know, Merfolk Branch Walker and things, so. No, um, so animating uh, your hostile desert requires a land in the graveyard. It's two and exile a land from your graveyard, and we just we just don't have a land here in the in the grave. So um, he's not doing it. Oh my goodness! Oh my goodness! We are going to be able to flip this. This is going to happen, ladies and gentlemen. We are flipping this profane procession. With 
Steel Leaf Champion under it. And whatever he plays this turn. So, like, if he plays a Steel Leaf Champion... Okay. Okay. Um... Sure. I mean... So now we get to do, like, all the things, I think? Uh... Alright, hold on a minute. Let's see what happens if we do this. We go... We're gonna take the Gigantosaur, so... White, red, black, colorless, colorless. Um... Okay. Blossoming Defense. That's pretty good. Um, that pretty much kills us, doesn't it? Yeah, he got us. He got us. Uh, we bullied the other guy. We're not bullying this guy. Yeah, I, I, we don't have any outs here. That's uh, um, the Gigantosaur got there. Actually, what got there was Vivian Reed, ladies and gentlemen. Vivian Reed, everybody. She's not bad. She's not bad. Uh, Poopy, your, your your little thing up there is about to fade away. So uh, real quick, I want to I just say one more time, uh, you know, thanks for joining. Um, everyone else who has recently joined and become a sponsor, uh, become a member of the Sideboard MTG community, other than just subscribing, uh, you know, um, like if you want to become a member, it's like a, a, a Twitch subscriber. Um, but if you want to do that, then uh, you can do that on YouTube Gaming. Um, you can. There should be a button there on your YouTube that allows you to go to YouTube Gaming where you get to you know, see things uh, in dark mode and things like that. If you like that, um, you got me, opponent. Yes, just all you had to do is swing um, into my settle. Right, uh, man, it was brutal, brutal. We got bullied there. We got bullied. Yeah. Bullied. Vivian, she's mean. She's bully. Vivian's bully. Anyway, we're going to jump back into it. But yeah, thank you. Thank you so much, Poopy. Uh, appreciate it. Uh, you would have a long time ago, but your technology is weak. <laughs> his science is strong, but his technology is weak. Um, <laughs> I like your... Um, I like your style, Poopy. Alright, I'm gonna keep. Uh, it, still gets, it still gets me to say your name uh, in, in direct context. It's just a name, right? Right? Meteor Golem. Oh my goodness. I wanna play with, like, I wanna look at this. Like, I would almost just scoop this up and be like, oh, let's go. oh man, it's C Mac again. We just played this guy. We just played this guy. Okay. Yeah, Meteor Golem would be really, really sweet. Um, I'm going to have to look into that. What is it? It's like seven mana to just hardcast Meteor Golem, right? Or is it something like crazy? No, this is... This is... This current list is mine. Um, we worked on it uh, for the Horde. So I built one originally back in like uh, Hour of Devastation. Uh, for the Horde, ended up building one here a while back. Um, he used, um, you know, uh, the, like you'll see the package where I have the, the one um, GPG in the deck and things like that. Um, you know, uh, that, that came from um, for the Horde. For the Horde also showed me, you know, he's like, uh, you know, you can you can turn five a, um, you know, pretty sweet little combo like with um, turn four, play pillage, turn five, play your fifth land, and you have the two treasures. You like um, just hard cast God Pharaoh's gift, or you hard cast an approach of the second sun. And he ran approach of the second sun in his version. I am not running the approach of the second sun version. Um, 
I'm gonna throw these two away and keep the cataclysmic and we can always just like hard cast cataclysmic hopefully sure um you dropped the nissas and just went with the vivian reeds i like it man like i got to see the we got to see the real power of vivian reeds right there guys pre-release Veraska's contempt just opened Pre-release Veraska's Contempt. That's what's for the pre-release. You get Veraska's Contempts. Okay. Um, that seems good. Six cents enchant creature. Whenever this creature deals combat damage to a player, draw a card. Wasn't that cool? I mean, that's a green. It's a green, you know, um, Curious Obsession. It's pretty good. I mean, Curious Obsession is going to give the plus one, plus one, but yeah. No, random foil. Got two Ixalons pre-release packs uh, the other day. Oh, okay. Cool. Cool. If the journey experiment fails, you'll throw them back in. Journey to Eternity is actually really cool. So, um, I think we gotta kill this one. I don't want him to keep drawing cards. So we just top decked like our perfect card. So let's let's do it. Let's noxious gear hulk here. Noxious gear hulk will kill the Merfolk branch walker with the. Um, six cents on it. This way we at least two for one, right? And we'll gain a little bit of life. It helps us stabilize a little bit here. I don't think we can block the Merfolk Branch Walker if he swings with it. Should you consider Plock a Worm for the, the future? You do have Gore Claw. Well, um, Plock a Plock a Plock a Plock a Worm's pretty good. I mean, I like Plock a Worm, but I don't know if. I don't know if that's exactly what you want. I think I'm going to play it pre-combat. I mean, I could just Sweltering Suns and swing. No, I couldn't. I don't have the red mana. So we can't do that. So we're just going to pre-combat with the Cataclysmic Gear Hulk. Make him make some some decisions. I, I don't even know what I'm talking about now, guys. I really don't. I've lost it. Rotation helps us massively. Always, always. Rotation is going to change so many things up. It's going to be uh, at least a couple weeks of just, you know, hey, let's figure out what do we have, what do we not have, what can we build. Personally, uh, as soon as rotation happens... I'm just going to go back and I want to revisit all the tribes. Um, I want to revisit merfolk. I want to revisit pirates. I want to revisit dinosaurs. I want to revisit all of the tribes um, and vampires, of course. Uh, mainly because I think that uh, you know the tribes are all self-supported. That we're all they were all put there in rivals of Ixlon and Ixlon, and we got a couple extra little pieces that kind of help them out after the fact. I think that blue green merfolk is going to be really good with Adonis Climb. Um, I think that there's some real power left there, and um, I think that that's actually going to be like where we're at. We're about to be into you know a world of tribes, and uh, that seems like really really good idea. Maybe wizards as well. Absolutely. Um, um, that was something else I was going to talk about. Like we don't just have those Rick, uh, rivals of Ixlon's tribes. They've they've thrown all of these extra little pieces and things like that. Now, granted, we're going to lose some wizards. You know, wizards might have to change, but there are a lot of uh, really good um, you know wizards out there. Um, so you know, the wizards deck may change a little bit. I mean, you're not going to have Soul Scar Mage. You're not going to have cards like um, you know our favorite Naga wizard. You know, um, 
which is um, you know champion of wits we're not going to have that so there are going to be some changes I mean we are going to lose some good things in some of the tribes but some of the tribes are just self-sustained and like all the cards are going to be there and I think that something like merfolk is going to be really really powerful the very first week or two of uh, rotation everyone's going to be trying to to figure out um, you know what's going on here you know I'm sure he's just going to bump this, right? Okay, we just trade. Sweet. Uh, I'm okay with that. He's got a land, so I like, I'm playing Field of Ruin, and I'm popping this land ASAP. Um, just to get a red source. Or I'll just top deck a red source that comes in untapped, and... Yeah, we'll just play it and see what happens here. What are you going to do, opponent? What are you going to do? He went to seven. He went to Jared. Anyway, uh, now he's at two. Yeah, I, I wanted to let him actually have that, that life to look at before he was like, oh, I'll just have him mill it. Um, we milled a combustible gear hulk and a cathartic reunion. So he scoops it up. He can't deal with both. He can't put enough blockers down to, to like, he needs three blockers to stop that. So, what's up, Rush? How you doing? Uh, <laughs> Rush said wizards can go to hell. Um, I, you mean the, you mean the, the tribe, right? Not like wizards of the coast, like, right? Like, we don't, we got no problems with wizards of the coast. They keep making games. They keep making like really cool cards, like the Eldest Reborn. Um, all right, so I'm leaving Boneyard Parlay and I'm doing it. Um, Cataclysmic Gear Hulk's really good in this matchup, I think. I actually think that Sweltering Sun's, I don't know, I mean, he's got a bunch of really small dudes, though. Just run it back. Just run it back. I'm not. I'm not even worried about this game with this guy. I actually want to go. Um, you know, look at this. Um, this golem. You know, maybe maybe check the golem out. Um, not going to be able to play with it tonight, but the golem may be exactly the card we're looking for. All right, we got some cards. We need to draw some lands. There's an elf. There's Jai Ballard. We'll play this. Another land would be sweet. I mean, if I have the Cathartic Reunion discard... Oh, what? Jar Ballard and another Cathartic Reunion? J Light Ranger on two. That's not bad. Not bad at all. Two cards entered the revealed zone. The opponent got a forest, and on top of his uh, library is a sixth sense. Combustible Gear Hulk. Okay, so now this is something that's a little bit wor more worth, uh, you know, a discard. So I'm going to go with. Make that land, or that mana. We're going to discard. These two. Draw three. That's not bad. So we get another Canyon Slew. So if we play the Canyon Slew next turn, what are we looking at here? If I play the Canyon Slew next turn, I can Torment my Voice, discard the Noxious Gear Hulk, Death Gorge Scavenger. That's not cool. That's another really good card against us. Really good card. Primal Amulet. This deck needs two flings so bad. No, it doesn't. And we do not need fling. No. So sword point diplomacy, uh, diplomacy, especially uh, with the Ixalan amulet, whichever the card is called, primal amulet. Okay. Um, I don't know what deck you'd be playing both of those in, but it seems cool. Some of you are laughing at me right now. Um, there's the Sweltering Suns. Yeah, we're doing this. 
We are 100% doing this. Like, we had other options there. Like, I could have played, um, like, next turn, I'm probably just going to play, you know, Tap Land, Cultivator's Caravan, pass the turn. Uh, but, yeah, that, like, we just, we had way too much we could do right there. So, yeah. And then he just drew a land. So yeah, we'll we'll just uh, do the the basic stuff here. Like everything that we knew we were gonna do anyway. Continue setting up, um, getting a few more lands down, that sort of thing. Um, next turn we're looking at being able to Liliana, being able to Jaya Ballard. Um, I don't think we're really in the mood for Jaya right now, but we could Jaya and then uptick her, throw away Noxious Gear Hulk and a Cataclysmic Gear Hulk, and maybe a, a Tormenting Voice. Uh, just trade them all out um, and draw some more cards. That's a problem. So is he down tick? He did not down tick. Does he attack? He attacked. Well, that's bad news for you, because now I'm 100% going to... Oh, no. I can't. I can't. We can't do it. We can't crew and swing. Or we can't... We can't do both the things. We can't do both the things. Um, I think we play Liliana then. Um, Jaya Ballard may have been the right answer, but with these scavenger grounds over here, I really can't risk throwing three of my gear hulks away. Um, I mean, if we throw a couple away to get a zombie here, that's fine, but I, 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 I just can't. I just can't. Can't do it. I mean, so we know he's got a Brontodon. We know he's got Merfolk Branch Walker. Probably shouldn't have cleared that Brontodon. You have a dream that Goreclaw plus Ripjaw equals Siege Rhino 2.0. Seems good. <laughs> seems good. It, it really does seem good. Siege Rhino that draws cards. Seems like I'm, I'm with you on that one, James. Goreclaw plus Ripjaw equals Siege Rhino 2.0. Seems good. Um, attacking Lily Anna. I'll block. I will block. All right, so I wonder how he navigates this. Um, he sacrifices it, this. Um, so if we go one, two will pop his graveyard um, we'll get a land so we're gonna grab white source yeah white source so we'll grab uh, planes and then now that he can't do this in response uh, we'll tormenting voice discarding a noxious gear hulk draw two cards down tick bring back noxious gear hulk use uh, the noxious gear hulk to kill merfolk branch walker gain one life crew with the cultivator's caravan swing at vivian reed for 
uh, five with cultivators caravan. Um, that's the play anyway. Yeah, like this is definitely our play. Cultivator's Caravan. Um, I tried a lot of cards in that spot when I first started playing with the uh, with the uh, the Gear Hulks list and things like that. I am going to go ahead and tell you guys, Cultivator's Caravan is a must-have in your Mardu Gear Hulk um, you know list. If you're running these Gear Hulk Reanimator list and things like that, don't overlook Cultivator's Caravan. Absolutely, to, like just terrific, wonderful card. Uh, the fact that you know we're we're crewing, we're giving. Um, um, you know, we're giving ourselves that little bit of ramp so that we can do extra things. Helps with our three color decks. Um, it, we're giving ourselves, you know, just ample ways to to like give you know the haste to, to give the mana to it. We can bring it back. Like there's just so many things you can do with Cultivator's Caravan. And um, yeah, I 100% I don't don't play this deck without your Cultivator's Caravan. Cultivator's Caravan is a lot better than people give it credit for. Brontodon. He's going to try to get in there. He wants to do some action. He keeps tapping his scavenger around, so it's like he has no intentions of sacking my graveyard. Like, I wonder why. Um, Jaya. Still leave champion. One, two, three, four, five... Land off the top wouldn't be horrible. That's a land off the top. So one, two, three, four, five. All right. So we cataclysmic gear hole. He has to get rid of one of his dudes. We lose cataclysmic gear hole. Um, swing with. Both? Yeah, that's that's where we're at. We're gonna lose a cataclysmic here. I'm gonna save Cultivator's Caravan. So we play Cara um Cataclysmic Gear Hall. Like now he has to decide if he wants to try to get the value out of his thrashing Brontodon right now or if he wants to try to do it later. Um, the other option would be okay so he does want to do it right now okay well then we get to keep Cataclysmic Gearhulk I mean I could let Noxious go to the, well we kill Vivian Reed here right I made the mistake one time, like, I selected Artifact, Creature, and forgot to pick my Planeswalker. So, I lost my Planeswalker. So, yeah. Even though you have Artifact and Creature, you have you are still responsible for picking them. So, yeah, that's a thing. Um, I guess we just do this. You know, make another zombie. We'll go ahead and, and crack Vivian here. And bye bye Vivian. Not dealing with that anymore. Just no Vivian, no. I want to cast Boneyard Parlay just one time tonight. Rush, you have a good night, man. Um, you're out. Your eyes are blurry. Catch you tomorrow. Well, take care, Mr. Rush. You get you some sleep, sir. And uh, drive safe out there. Follow up Vivian. He's just hanging on to an extra Vivian. Uh, slaughter the. You slaughtered the strong in a game the other day. Um, didn't pick your creatures. All attacking walls and Arcades. Lost them all. Wow. Oh, wow. Yeah, that would have to happen because you have to pick up to four power. And if you don't pick, like, all of your walls and your. Oh, man. Yeah. That could be brutal. I can see that. Yeah, that'd be very brutal. 
I mean, we're looking at blossoming defense, like, just wiping us. I'm definitely swinging with a zombie because we've got, like, sweltering suns. We can do that type of stuff. If he kills one of my creatures, we just bring it back, and that sort of thing. Um, yeah. Um, if he blocks the noxious gear hulk, we kill both of them with the sweltering sun. Maybe, kind of, sort of. I don't know. This giant Ballard would be nice to get down. Not while I'm still holding like a cataclysmic gear hulk or something, but yeah. For the horde. About middling, but looking up. Um, <laughs> whatever. Uh, about middling, but looking up. How's the deck going? Yeah, it's doing all right. It's doing all right. Uh, we played uh, we played a a really jank deck. Then we played mono green, and now it looks like we're playing the same mono green deck again. Um, I mean, granted, it's a it's a deck. So we'll block. I mean, now he has to pump or trade. All right, so he pumps. That's one less pump that he's got next turn, I guess. We just use Lily to like bring it back anyway. That'd be a thing, right? Oh, he's just going. He's going to go ahead and scavenge grounds. He's being done with this stuff. Dragon Skull Summit. Well, no point in being boy. Noxious Gear Hulk. Do you have another opponent? You do not. Tormenting voice, tormenting voice on top. Not bad. He scoops it up. We got our revenge. We got our revenge on that mono green deck. Um, yeah. Mono green's a real deal. And then we played like Grixis earlier today. We did okay there. We played Jank. We did okay there. But mono green, man. What a meanie. All right. So you guys found it. You. Um, is that right? Meteor. How do they spell meteor? How we spell gold? Oh, my stuff is frozen. It's because it's trying to look for Mator. Uh, smash good, but only for Gear Hulks. Hulk smash, right? Absolutely. Oh, I did spell it right. Meteor Golem. Meteor Golem enters the battlefield. Destroy target non land permanent and opponent controls. That needs to be my Jaya Ballard and my Boneyard Parlay. That's the card. That like that is 100% the card I'm looking for. Like, yeah. Um, I definitely think that this would be just Meteor Golems. Two Meteor Golems here for, for my big jank cards. Um, Meteor Golems probably perfect here. Yeah, absolutely. So the only thing that M19 really brought us was uh, Meteor Golem, and then in Dominaria, you know, we were looking at Eldest Reborn, uh, cards like that. Um, those were the big ones that kind of come from Eldest Reborn. Pirate's Pillage is still kind of cute. It's a little bit expensive, but uh, one of the main reasons I actually took the Pirate's Pillage was it just gives us a little bit more converted mana cost for our Combustible Gear Hulk, so there's kind of like, eh, let's do it, let's don't do it, so... Um, but yeah, Meteor Golem, um, I definitely think that's it. Um, the impact sent the soldiers scattering. Then some came out of the crater. Then something came out of the crater, right? Yeah, it's just a little 3 3 Golem. But yeah, I wish we had art. It's messed up. It's messed up, Wizards. It's messed up. Hey guys, I see a pillage. You do, you see a pillage. Um, this is one of the few decks I would ever run a pillage in. Pillage will let us get to something like a Meteor Golem a little bit quicker or something like that. So, uh, yeah. Um, 
Another deck, I actually have a deck that I've been toying around with that has Meteor Golem in it. I don't know why I didn't think about it. Um, but it is a God Pharaoh's Gift deck. It's Sultai God Pharaoh's Gift. Uh, uses the new Stitcher, has Meteor Golem, things like that. Um, if you go back and look at the old Sultai um, God Pharaoh's Gift decks, we had this uh, multi-form Wander in there as a couple of, and we have the Meteor Golem in it, um, in it now with the, the new Stitcher. So um, I've got a, uh, I've got that Sultai God Pharaoh's Gift deck that uh, that I'm wanting to play for you guys. I know you guys probably want to see that. It's actually a really mean deck. Uh, it does use Gate to the Afterlife to kind of trigger and go off and things like that. Pyromancer, what pyro? What pyromancer are we looking at here, Clay? Ah, notice me. Twilight Prophet? I don't know about Twilight Prophet. Dismissive Pyromancer. Discard a card, draw a card. Um, sacrifice it, deal 4 damage. Burn, burn, keep, burn. <laughs> the flavor text is terrific. Burn, burn, Ooh, I'll keep that. Burn. Um, that, that seems like something my D&D character would say, right? Um, I'm playing Eldridge Knight, you know. I, I was originally going to go with Force Push, but get to looking into the lore a little bit more, looking into my spells, and we're pretty much just gonna, we're gonna be sword and, sword and spells, fire, lots of fire. Um, Dismissive Pyromancer is actually pretty decent, if I wasn't running something that is just like, my main plan is to just wipe the board of everything small, um, yeah, I, I would probably run something like uh, Dismissive Pyromancer. It actually looks like it would probably fit somewhere. So, uh, card's not bad. It's two, two for two. So, I mean, you get a bear with abilities. That's not bad at all. Um, you can't get in with your bear. Start discarding cards, drawing cards. Like that doesn't sound bad. Uh, your bear is like just outmatched by these. Um, I don't know. Steel Leaf Champions. You pay three mana and bye bye bear, and bye bye Steel Leaf Champion. Yeah, and it's a human wizard, right? So, yeah, um, that's not bad. It's not bad. I like it. I like how he's, like, throwing a book, and it's catching on fire, and it's burned. Just, right, that's pretty cool. Um, my favorite new Pyromancer is the, uh, the Vashino? Vashino? Man, I mess that up every time. Uh, the Vashino Pyromancer enters the battlefield deals two damage. Just more, I mean, it's a wizard, too. Um, I guess all Pyromancers are wizards. There's a 3 mana, 3-1 three with haste. Um, liberating combustion. What? Deals 6 damage to target creature for 5 mana. You may search your library for a card named Chandra Pyrogenius. Um, yeah, I, I think, like, yeah. Dismissive Pyromancer, if if we were trying to build a much uh, lower to the ground version of the deck, then Dismissive Pyromancer would probably be really, really good. Um, as of right now, though, I don't think that it would take the place of something like uh, Tormenting Voice or, or Cathartic Reunion. Uh, basically, Cathartic Reunion is just, like, awesome, but yeah. Uh, dismissive kills champ. Poopy, I thought you left. I know, but... I like this discussion. <laughs> uh, yeah, we. I, I'm just not playing early game creatures. The idea is to sweltering suns and wipe the board and things like that. Um, I've been running like settle the wreckage, but like settle the wreckage has been one of the few ga cards that just seems like it's horrible. Um, there, you know, there's always times where settle the wreckage is going to be a mean card and it's just going to do great things. But in all reality, I actually think that this deck may just want to lighten up on the white mana a little bit more. Um, you know, trying to get it on four is probably a little bit hard. Getting it on five, you know, that's that's not you know overwhelmingly difficult. We just need one mana uh, by turn four, uh, one white mana by turn four, so that we can catch the refurbish and stuff. So maybe uh, we're actually looking at something along the lines of like Hour of Devastation or something like that. Um, you would ditch the white. Well, you can't really ditch the white because like you um, end up losing refurbish. And I don't want to go through this madcap skills thing or something like that. Sword point diplomacy? Nah, I I, I don't think that, that would be I don't think that, that would be playable. That card's not that great. Your opponent's always going to give you exactly what they should. Like, you're not, they're never going to give you a Gear Hulk that could do four damage to you if they could just deal with it for three damage. Like, it, it's the same principle behind if you had an Adanto Vanguard and your opponent had 
a hazard down and they swung at you with a hazard would you block with your Odonto Vanguard and give your Odonto Vanguard um, you know indestructible until end of turn even though that cost you four life would you do that or would you take five mana from um, the hazard well in all reality like four is less than five saving yourself that one life that's a good play like okay I'll block with Odonto Vanguard give him a uh, indestructible I take one less than I would have and that's kind of the theory behind sword point diplomacy like so you know the the last time I played a sword point diplomacy was in one of Russia's decks I, I forget which one it was um, but um, we played uh, we played uh, sword point diplomacy the opponent gave us all three cards it was a land of, of rekindling Phoenix and something else but we later seen that the the opponent was just sitting there holding all the answers and the only reason he gave us the cards was because he had the answers to deal with them so if he didn't have the answers to deal with them then at that point he has to give us the cards uh, or he has to just take three life off them so yeah I mean I get it sometimes you're gonna hit them for three sometimes you're gonna you know get some cards in your hands but remember they're only gonna do what's best for them okay I can't deal with this I'll just pay three life and be done with it now okay I can't deal with that I'll pay three life and be done with it now and I do get that there's some decks out there where like you can you can build and brew your deck around to the point where they don't really have the option they don't have the option to take three life and at that point you're kind of winning anyway so like torment of scarabs uh would just do it eventually like if you're just winning anyway like that so i'm just not a real big fan of uh, sword point diplomacy guys i just really i'm really not it just gives your opponent just all of the options and the only thing it does uh to you is goes hey i'm either about to hit you or i'm about to get some cards which means i'll hit you later um that that might be okay for some of you um, but remember, like whichever of those two decisions um, is going to help the opponent the most, that's the one that's going to happen. So if they have the life and they can take nine life, you ain't getting cards. Or you're going to get a land and then they'll take six life to deal with you, the Scarab God or something like that. So, yeah. Um, yeah that's, that's all I got. Um, sword point diplomacy is just, it, yeah. I, I'm just not a fan of it. I mean, yeah, if you copy it, you're going to do a lot of things, but I'm, I'm not going to stick on Sword Point Diplomacy. Um, Meteor Golem, probably the card that this deck was looking for. Um, if you play it, if you try out this Mardu Gearhawks list or something of that nature, um, be sure to let me know in the comments. You know, like if you tried it out, if you tried out, you know, if you have a, a Mardu Gearhawks list or something, let, let me know. Like, this has been one of my pet decks since um, Kaladesh. Uh, since the Gear Hulks were printed and we first started trying to refurbish, um, I mean, because we had, you know, Cathartic Reunion, we had refurbish, we had the Gear Hulks uh, all by the end of Aether Revolt. And this was just a really, it was a really fun thing to play around with, and it's taken many forms over the past couple years. So, um, yeah, Meteor Golem is not very playable without refurbish. You're right. Um, I don't think that I would like to. To try to play Meteor Golem, only bringing it back with Liliana, uh, but yet you could do that. Like so, yeah. The Gear Hulks are worth six mana or whatever. Yeah, yeah, they are. Um, and that's one of the things you'll do when you play this deck against like a control deck. You won't even worry about your refurbishes and stuff. You'll just wait. You'll play your Gear Hulk Hulks out naturally. They'll counter those. Then you start playing out your refurbished spells, your Lilianas, things like that. And then when one sticks, it's kind of all over. But yeah. Um, well, that's what this deck is, all right? Gear Hulks and refurbish. Um, otherwise you'd just play a, re a, a different reanimator deck. You're right, I'd be playing like Sultai reanimator, which I still can't seem to make work. I don't know why. Alright guys, um, I won't see you guys again until Sunday, I guess. Uh, unless I just get a wild hair and decide I want to want to stream something. Um, so we'll see you guys Sunday and we're going to be playing Liliana's Contract. <laughs> um, if I do play anything between now and then, uh, we're going to be uh, playing Deb's version of Liliana's Contract. Um, I may do a Deb's deck, Deb's Liliana's Contract. He produced it like three or four weeks ago. Um, but uh, yeah, we're I, I may play that. Um, yeah, absolutely. Post your Liliana's Contract decks over on the Reddit. We'll be playing those this Sunday. Um, if you don't, please, 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 if you haven't posted yet, 
please put Liliana's contract or contract, just contract at least somewhere in the title. So when I search for it, I can find it like that. Guys, my name's Eric. You've been watching Sideboard MTG. I hope you liked the show. If you did, give it that thumbs up. If you were new to the community and maybe you want to join the community, there's a bunch of ways you can do that. You can just hit that subscribe button. doesn't cost you a thing. If you're watching on YouTube Gaming and you want to join the community and join so that you can hang out and chat like Rocker and Justin Clay and Poopy and For the Horde and Rush and Inquisitor, G Jesus, Jesus, whatever... Um, even Nightbot's in there, right? Like, if you want to hang out, you want to you wanna chat and use your emojis and things, you can join there and become a member of the Cyborg MTG community. That's what YouTube's calling it, memberships. Um, so we're going to roll with that. Anyway, yeah. Uh, don't forget the meal deck. Uh, we will not. I, uh, I am going to play uh, probably three games of that meal deck some point next week. Um, so we're going to be doing that. So, um, yeah, if you want to see the mill deck, that'll be coming up next week. I'm going to be playing Zach Sedillo's mill deck. I think Madness also, um, threw one over on the Reddit, but I didn't really get around to it. We had the problems last Sunday. So, um, yeah, uh, we'll, we'll, we'll get to the mill deck. The mill deck is not gone. There's another deck I actually want to get to as well. Um, that's a aid from the cowl deck. So before those rotate, I've got to play this aid from the cowl deck. I've kind of been waiting, waiting to find the the list that I really want to play or or some ideas. But there's just not a lot going on with aid, aid of the cowl. So you know you kind of got to be fresh with your brews there. But um, aid looks really good. And then um, yeah, um, join on YouTube. Um, if you want to uh, support us here um, on the channel, you can do that. You know, also over on Patreon. And if you want your decks played, then you can just, it doesn't cost you anything. Just post them on Reddit. What else do we got going on? Man, that's so much YouTube jargon at the end of these things, right? Guys, I'll tell you what. I had a lot of fun. I hope you had fun. And um, if you did, we'll see you next time here on Sideboard MTG. What are we jamming out to here, huh? Let's jam out to something cool. Street Fighter, Zelda, Metal Gear Solid, Metal May Cry. This, deck's, this, this song's pretty cool. Have fun, guys.